that. Buddy! Yes? We still have a movie to get to. We need to talk about um, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, the band Fish, uh, the Flaming Lips, Fred Armisen, the movie Candyman, Deep Hurting, and, of course, the big <coughs> reveal of next week's uh, movie. But before we get to any of that, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should indeed take a break. Okay. We will be right back with more of the book on film after this. Do 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 and break. Dora the Explorer. I'm queuing on Karen. I'm different from Dora the Explorer because I'm God's color. White. This is my sidekick, Bunny the Rabbit. Say hello, Bunny. Hashtag Donald Trump. Dora the Explorer has a monkey sidekick, but not me because I come from Kentucky and not some shithole country. Oh, kids. Can you count to 11? Well, how about counting to 11 million? Can you do that? Hashtag stop the steal. Because that's how much Trump beat Biden by in the 2020 election, but the Dominion voting machines were rigged by Hugo Chavez and the Zionists and the Chinese government to take down the God-fearing votes of the 90 million Christian Americans who voted for Donald Trump. Hashtag seek no more. Look up in the sky. Do you see a star? No, you don't. Because stars aren't real. They're just a deep state psyop that's designed to control you. <laughs> Who's trying to control you? Just follow the money. Just follow the money trail. We're talking Bill Gates. Hashtag We're talking George Soros. Rothschilds. We're talking Hillary Clinton. Hashtag Hillary for prison. MTV's Dan Cortez. Hashtag oh, oh. Save the Children. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Hashtag Hail Satan. And other Jewish people. Hashtag Save the Children. They're trying to mind control you. That's why the masks are there. That's not helping anyone. It's all a conspiracy. A conspiracy to implant chips into your bloodstream so they can know where you are. Jewish space lasers.
international male artist in England four years in a row. Here is all the magic of Slim Whitman, the international star who has sold 31 million records. All the songs that touch people's hearts the most are in this album, and I hope you'll let them touch your heart too. Have I told All my best. This giant record treasury is only $7.98. Complete tape collection is only $9.98. Not sold in any store. Order yours now. To get this beautiful treasury mail, $7.98 for album, $9.98 for 8-track tape to Slim Whitman. Box 2525, Grand Central Station, New York, 10017. Be sure to do it now. This special Slim Whitman collection is available through this offer only. Rush $7.98 for album, $9.98 for tape to Slim Whitman. Box 2525, Grand Central Station, New York, 10017. Slim Whitman. Box 2525, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, 10017. Dr. Frankenstein was my father. But you can call me whatever you want. As long as it's not... Oh, idiot monster! Hideous monster! See you next week.
Space on the surface of Mars. A futuristic baby is being born. But the oxygen generator blows up. Keep that idiot away from the wire! And the gravity control pod is needing adjustment. Things look grim, but... You never know. It is Christmas Eve. An alien super being shows up. And he's green. But Major Surtis is freaked out. And so is a guy in a sand suit. They are seeing bad things. Is that baby going to be alright? It is sad. But the alien fixes the oxygen generator. And somehow wears the sand suit. But the gravity control pod is tough to fix. But they create their own happiness anyway. It's Christmas on Mars. At rock festivals this summer. On AVD for Christmas 2008. And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Okay, so this is how I was going to start the second half of the podcast. I was going to be shirtless and doing weights. <laughs> and then I was going to be like, God dang it! Why are you always barging in here when I don't have my shirt on? But then I realized that like I'm a woman right now and I got my boobs in and so I can't really have my shirt off, but that's what I was going to do. And, I just and, and what I have to say is fucking Facebook neighbors? What? That's the thing I forgot to say in the last segment. <coughs> what, is, what is that? As a new feature, Facebook, so you can use Facebook to get to know your neighbors? Really? Like, Facebook, if I have to use Facebook to get to know my neighbors, I don't want to get to know my neighbors. If I'm not if... knocking on their door with a bunt cake, I don't see how Facebook is helping out here. I think what that is is, like, there was, there was an app that came out, and it, gi- it would give you memories and like here's a look back at what you posted on Twitter a year ago, what you posted on Instagram a year ago, here's time what hop? you post time hop. Yeah. Time hop. And then once time hop became popular, Facebook said, Oh, we can do that too. Here are your memories. Every day, here are the memories. And and so use Facebook instead of that app. And what you're explaining to me, Bunny, sounds like they figured out nextdoor.com and said, yeah. shit, we'll do a nextdoor.com. Here's your neighbors. Get to know them. That sounds ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. No, no. These days, like one in every six people is a raving fucking lunatic. Okay? Yeah. I don't want to know which one of my neighbors is that lunatic. I know. I know all about my neighbors. Okay, there's some white people over there that it, the mom constantly smells like cheap cigarettes. There's people over there at the door. Uh, they have a door that used to be red with their all-white house. They've since painted the door, but they do drugs. There's the people next door, and they're always welding at, like, 1 a.m., which seems pretty sus, but they leave us alone, and we leave them alone. There's the house over there in the corner where I swear to God some shady shit's going on. 
So there's always 30 people there. But I know that if anything were to ever happen to us, the 30 people who are in that house would get guns and start helping us. Then there's the people with the two dogs over there. And for some reason, they're always in the front yard playing cornhole. Like, are you professional cornhole players or something? And you've got the board and you're always cornholing. Those are our neighbors. Okay, but to be fair, yeah, the guy next door makes custom-made benches, and so he's always in his backyard at night making benches and burning wood and chopping shit and fucking welding because he makes and sells benches, and apparently he can only do it at night, so we've got a vampire bench maker next door. A vampire carpenter, yeah. So, so those are our neighbors. I don't need Facebook for that. Yeah. That was a 100% description of all of our neighbors. <laughs> There's also a, 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 an African-American family uh, a caddy corner from us. And I'm assuming that the mom is always saying, what are you doing in, in, cooped up inside your room? Go outside and play. Because they've got like a 10-year-old or an 11-year-old. And I don't even, I, he spends 90% of the day outside. But not even going anywhere. He's just in his front yard. He lives in his front yard, this kid. Yeah. And I want the pandemic to be over so that my kids can befriend this one kid who just plays in his front yard. Yeah. Those are our neighbors. Uh, let's just talk about neighbors instead of the movie. <laughs> this is fun. We had neighbors in the apartment. We had neighbors underneath us. And then they were shot to death in a drug deal gone wrong. All right. And that's when we moved out of the apartment. Hooray! Neighbors! Uh, okay. It's time, Bunny! Yes, it is. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast, America's 2000. 486 most popular film podcast to slowly, methodically amble our way into the final half of the show. And it is the back half's job to finally, eventually get around to discussing our all new extra strength, high fiber, low fat, no artificial additives or preservatives, turbocharged, all wheel drive, anti lock brakes, all terrain, no money down for six weeks. And now available in suppository form, Movie of the Week! <coughs> and this week, we go into the mind of Oklahoma's most beloved drugged-out weirdos with a movie, if it can be called that, which is our first movie in our month-long Christmas season, the 2000 and Lips, Flaming Lips, and I use finger quotes, film... Christmas on Mars! So, Christmas on Mars looks drab and bleak and lifeless. Wow! So this is the aftermath. This is what happens when Santa Claus conquers your planet. Yes. Yet another white colonizer ruining an entire society. You know what? Fuck you, Santa! All hail Voldar! He was right. Voldar was right. We should have thrown Santa and Pia Zadora through the airlock. Yeah. Basically, Droppo is the Judas of Martians. <laughs> Voldar was the one where it's like, hey, we shouldn't be letting kids watch Earth shows. We need to think about uh, Martians first. <laughs> that was... That was Voldar's yeah. phrase. And he tried to kill Santa, and then Santa's like, No, Santa Claus is here, and we're going to help all of the people. And now look at how Martians are doing. There's yeah. only one, and he's green, and he's a freaking drugged-out hippie! Funny, uh, I feel like, because we, it, it, with our new format, we talk about the film a little bit throughout the entire movie. And so I can already tell 
that there's a good chance that we are of different minds when it comes to this week's movie, yeah. the 2008 film uh, Christmas on Mars. But hear me out here. I give this film credit because any film that four and a half minutes in makes you say, well, I guess we're going into the space vagina. Yeah. Any film that makes you say that less than five minutes into the film should get at least a modicum of respect. Yes, but it loses that respect. It's, you know, it's not so much that this is a bad movie. It is. Uh, but this looked like well, we're the flaming lips. We're too cool to care. You know, so it's like it's like you could have made a better movie, but that wouldn't be cool. Yeah. And that annoyed the fuck out of me. You know, well, we're not talking about something like Birdemic or Born to Mafia, where you could see these people are working with fucking peanuts. And they're doing the best they can. Yeah. You know? This is... Yeah, yeah we, we don't care enough is the vibe I got off of this. This was a... The interesting thing that I think about this is that they released the movie and then they released a, uh, a soundtrack. Like, all of the incidental music they released as an album called Christmas on Mars. And the movie has like a rating of like 5 out of 10 across, you know, like Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. But the soundtrack is like a 7 or an 8 out of 10. Really? And I saw a handful of reviews that said, yes, Christmas on Mars is bad, but it gave us the wonderful album Christmas on Mars. And so, a, the second time that I watched this film, I was trying to focus on the incidental music that plays in the background, because apparently that's like an 8 out of 10, whereas the movie is just 5. Yeah. I was trying to think of other films where the soundtrack was great, but the movie was shit. I am a huge fan of the soundtrack to Batman Forever. <coughs> yeah. Huge fan of that soundtrack. I hate the I hated the band, the the the. Honey, pretty life for a white guy. The what were they? What what was the name of them? The Alp. The Alp. The Offspring. Okay. In the soundtrack to Batman Forever, they do a cover of a of a misfit song. And then Kiss from a Rose, which is just become like a meme at this point. And yeah. uh, uh, I mentioned that, oh, uh, you 2 had a great song, Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me. Made out with a woman to that song. It, like, my, like right before I went to college. And like I love that song. And the Flaming Lips have a song on the... Batman Forever soundtrack, the only song of theirs that I, have, that I absolutely love, and it's a song called Bad Days. It yeah. plays when you see Jim Carrey go into his, I don't know, uh, Riddler cave. But the reason why I picked this bizarre 2008 art film is because it was created by the Flaming Lips, because I wanted to talk about the Flaming Lips a little bit on the podcast. So right. I want to get that over with before we really talk about the movie. Um... This bizarre weirdo art film was the brainchild of Wayne Cohen? Cohen? He's the front man for the band The Flaming Lips, and they're psychedelic, they're alternative, they're was crazy. Was he the Martian? Yes, yes, he was. Okay. And, and there were some famous names in this. Because it looks like there a was... dynamic front man part. Yeah, yeah. That's the David Bowie part. Yeah. Where, like, he doesn't have lines, so he doesn't have to act, because he can't. Yeah. That's the Ringo part. Yes. <laughs> so, so, they're psychedelic, they're alternative, they're a crazy band, they're an art band. 
they're a jam band, they're a drug band, right? Yeah. And also, and this is true, Oklahoma fucking loves them. Really? That was the weirdest, that was one of the first weird things that I noticed when I lived in Oklahoma, when I moved to Oklahoma, is that this is a super ultra-conservative red state with like a whopping crap ton of like uh, evangelical Christians and militias and gun-toting nut jobs and people following uh, uh, abortion doctors to their homes and like uh, taking uh, their semi-automatic shotguns to the Walmart, but they also love the goddamn flaming lips. <laughs> fucking weird. Apparently, Wayne Cohen, he was born fucking somewhere else. I don't know. But he grew up in Oklahoma City, and he he lived in Oklahoma City, and he never left Oklahoma City. Even when he became like a super big, huge, famous band with the White Stripes, he still lived in like a fairly ghetto part of Oklahoma City. When he was uh, in high school, he got a job at a Long John Silver's in Oklahoma City, and yeah. he worked there for 13 years. Wow. God damn. So if Wayne Cohen's life goes to shit, at least he got a job making hush puppies. That fucking blew my mind. When I learned that, there aren't a lot of, like, uh, uh, debonair front men who also worked a fast food job for over a decade. Yes. You know? Like, shit. Like, you got well, a bit of was, respect from was, me there. He was Judge Reinhold in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah. That was him. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, Yeah. There's a story on his Wikipedia page about how when he was working at Long John Silver, he was robbed at gunpoint, and it triggered something in me. So uh, I was going to, I thought about talking about that, but I'm not going to. So yeah, when he got big with the Flaming Lips, he stayed in Oklahoma City. His band recorded in, in 2001, the Flaming Lips recorded the soundtrack to an Oklahoma fishing documentary. Okay. Like, uh, what's the word? Catfish canoodling? You know what that is? Yes. Where you, like, stick your hand in and Under a catfish logs and shit. bites it. Yeah, they made a documentary about that, and the Flaming Lips did the soundtrack to it. And then in 2007, they released a concert DVD of a big show that they did. Inside the Oklahoma City Zoo. Okay. And there's there's like a there's like an amphitheater by the zoo, and it's like the zoo amphitheater, and it's the concert venue by the zoo. But no, the they did their show. Yeah, they did their show in the zoo. And then in March of 2009, the Oklahoma Senate approved the Flaming Lips song Do You Realize? as being the official rock song of the state of Oklahoma. Okay. And honestly, this is one of the main reasons why I chose this week's movie, Christmas on Mars, as our first Christmas movie this year, because it's fucking strange as <coughs> shit how Oklahoma is like a far-right state. But they have a huge soft spot for this one fucking weird out druggy band. And I never understood that, but even like a far right nut job with a gun who's wearing a Punisher shirt and hates minorities could probably sing the song Do You Realize by the Flaming Lips. Fucking weird. It's like if you move to Maryland and you real and like a. Uh, Oh, yeah, well, this is a small community. You know, we keep to ourselves, and uh, we mainly just go out and look at lighthouses and, of course, uh, listen to the monkeys. Yeah. Huge van in this state. We love the monkeys. You know, like something weird like that. Like, uh, oh, hey, did you know... 
that Idaho loves the band Anthrax. Yeah. Okay, that's fucking weird. But yeah. I like some of their music. The Batman Forever soundtrack is the shit, and everyone is always like creaming themselves of from that one album, Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots, I think is the name of the album. But um, I see the Flaming Lips music the same way I look at the band Fish. Everyone yeah. says, oh, man, you just don't understand their music until you do drugs. When you're on drugs, their music is great. And then it's like, you need to preface that because there's different fucking drugs. <laughs> Okay, like a yeah, fish yeah, cocaine in the makes flaming the lips. They're... Better. What's your fucking point? Yeah, like fish in the flaming lips. They're acid bands. I just smoked some weed and had a beer. Those are different fucking highs. Yeah, I get high and listen to fish, and I'm like, I don't fucking. I still don't fucking get this. Apparently, I just need to do acid and listen to fish. But let me tell you. The Grateful Dead, I love them now. Yeah? Holy shit. Yeah. Like, getting high and listening to, like, skeletons from the closet, the music just hits differently. Yeah. When I'm on weed, and that is what I have learned, and it's great. But yeah, there's different highs. The way that I described this film to Natasha was uh, this movie <coughs> is Meow Wolf the Home Game. Yeah. Hey, kids, do you love Meow Wolf? But you want to bring some of the magic of Meow Wolf at home? Well, now you can purchase Meow Wolf the Home Game. Each copy of Meow Wolf the Home Game comes with a VHS tape of Christmas to Mars and one marijuana. Yeah. And like, okay, you kind of get that. Anyway, that's my uh, Flaming Lips rant. Let's talk about this movie. Funny. <sighs> Look, I believe in you. <laughs> okay. I, I believe in you so much. I am rooting for you. Because, see, well, you, you are so good at describing plot. The story Everything. had some potential, you know, so, so there were some interesting bits scattered around here. Uh, so it's, a, it's like a Martian colony, although it's hard to have a colony if you have no women. Yeah. Uh, There's one. It's in a there, bubble like John Travolta. There was the one yeah. who had some, who had a very unusual... Uh, prenatal regimen. Yes. Okay. Uh, but she was she was pregnant, and we don't really get to find out much because she's just a host body, I guess. Uh, which is what Republicans want all women to be. Because she didn't have anything else to do in the movie. She was just a pregnant yeah. chick. She, she only appeared like twice. She didn't interact with yeah. anybody. She only appeared like two or three times, and then that was it. She she was she was a tank. Yeah, a breathing tank. She would yeah she was a vessel for God. Uh. <laughs> then the oxygen thingamabob blows up. It's yeah. the thing that provides oxygen to the colony. So we got a bit of a problem here, not having oxygen anymore. Um. And it's kind of a a, a B plot, I don't know. And there's this other guy who's having really strange hallucinations about fetuses and vaginas. Yes. Uh, turns out another guy, the Hebrew Hammer, is Hebrew having Hammer. similar hallucinations. Yeah. And they say it's because of the oxygen in the whatever, wherever the hell they really were, uh, yeah. was very thin, so they were more prone to hallucination. 
they were in their uh, space colony and certainly not an abandoned factory somewhere in the <laughs> in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the guy who first mentioned his hallucinations, he's putting on a play about Santa Claus. Yes. To make everybody feel good before they all die or something like that. He's trying to lift spirits because apparently everyone's going insane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Martian shows up and he's like quiet and Martian-y. Martian uh, and he gets hooked into playing Santa Claus. Uh, he does some magical things. The woman gives birth to the 2001 baby and that fixes everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's Pretty basically sure that's the plot. It. <laughs> yeah. That's basically the plot. Hi, baby. Uh, good job explaining the plot because uh, can you not put the baby bill cheese in front of the camera, Eleanor? Thank you. Uh, because you're really good at explaining plots, but this week's movie, Christmas on Mars, yeah. this is boss level explaining a plot. Oh, thank you. Well, this is. That's what made it so annoying, because there were some interesting ideas, there were some interesting things that they were trying to reach, to, to, to do, kinda? Yeah. And there were some surprising okay, we're not talking people about, in there. Like, five guys in an 8 millimeter camera who want to make a movie, and they have fucking no money, you know? I mean, they may not be a top band. But the Flaming Lips are a working band. They sell the albums and things like that. I'm sure they had more money to invest in this movie. I'm they, sure they could have worked a little harder than this movie. But, it looks, but to me, it looks like, well, we're just too cool for that, so we're not going to do it. And well, I found that really fucking annoying. Well, I would be remiss it, to not mention this. There is a documentary on the band, The Flaming Lips, and it's called The Fearless Freaks. Because Wayne Cohen, the, the founder of the Flaming Lips, he has uh, siblings, and they would play together in the backyard and stuff, and they called themselves the Fearless Freaks when they were playing, and so that's the name of the documentary. And it was made, the documentary was made in like 2005 when they were still making this movie, and there is a scene in the documentary where you can see uh, Wayne Cohen hard at work building an insane space set in his backyard and all of his fucking neighbors <coughs> looking on worried because who the fuck is this crazy ass guy building a spaceship in his backyard so uh, if you like Christmas on Mars go see the Fearless Freaks that's a movie so that's a thing see I feel it, 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 okay it, there are some surprising people in this movie yeah yeah. Some pretty surprising people. So, number one, Adam Goldberg is in it. As far as I'm concerned, he's the only, like, the best actor in it. He was in Dazed and Confused. He was in <coughs> Saving Private Ryan. He was in Ed TV. And he was also the Hebrew Hammer, which was basically a Jewish uh, a black dynamite. And he's in this, and he has this long monologue where he's explaining his vision of this Nazi band in space outfits, and they're playing music, but they also have vaginas for heads, and there's a baby on the road in front of them, and they have to trample the baby. But the thing is, is that um, other actors making a film with no money and no budget and just doing it as a favor, and it's in black and white, and it's being, yeah, it, it was shot on film, yeah. you know, in someone's backyard, they would play that speech for laughs, but you can tell that Adam Goldberg is fucking trying. 
Yeah. And he's actually acting. And that's the, the part that I ended up loving the most because, like, this is a ridiculous fucking monologue that you have been handed, but you are actually trying to act. And, like, uh, okay. good for you, Adam Goldberg. But you have done a problem. good job with, with a ridiculous scene. But here's the problem, okay? Whenever something like this, when you have a movie like this, and then somebody comes along and acts, it only shows how fucking bad everybody else's acting is. It's well, like the... if you accidentally wipe a spot on the kitchen wall and it's now fucking clean. Yeah. Well, so you have well, to clean I... the whole damn wall. That's it. Well, here, let's talk about that because there are three famous people in this. There's Adam Goldberg. There's Steve Burns, a.k.a. Steve from Blue's Clues. We'll get back to him. And SNL alumni, Fred Armisen. And then there's also the guy who played the captain. And I looked him up because he was he seemed to actually be having fun yeah. with his role. So I wanted to know it's who just, he was. Oh, it's just that his dialogue was so fucking horrible. It was horrible, but he was having fun with it, and I appreciated that. You know, yeah. like, you know you have a shit role, and you're just having fun with it. I felt like when he was on, like, for most of this, it felt like an artsy student film. But then when he showed up, I'm like, oh, my God, this is Samurai Cop. Yeah. You know, this is, this is suddenly a trauma film, and I appreciate you. So I wanted to know who he was, and his name was, in the credits... Mark DeGroffenreed. And I looked him up on IMDb. <laughs> He's only done one thing, and it's this, which is Christmas on Mars. And so I go, okay, well, I'll Google Mark DeGraffenreed, because there can't be that many Mark DeGraffenreeds, right? That has to be an original name. Okay, so, so I didn't Google him. I binged him, because I use Bing. So I binged Mark DeGraffenreed, and according to Bing, and according to Google, Mark DeGraffenreed is a famous Mormon sculptor. Wow, okay, I never thought I would hear those two words go together like that. Mormon so sculptor. You know, hold on, hold on, I'm going to have to work with this a little while to be able to fully... Mormon sculptor a famous mormon sculptor and painter okay so here's the thing here's the thing is that mark de graffenreed the famous mormon sculptor and mormon painter is that the same motherfucker who sang the n-word and cussing in this goddamn flaming lips movie <coughs> because Again, in my mind i'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking no Mormon would be, like, cussing and saying the F word in a Flaming Lips movie. You but know on the you other hand, do. You but know on you the other do. hand, you got to cross-reference with that area's Long John Silvers. That's a good point, yeah. Because Wayne Cohen... Somebody's you know, got to cover the shift. Shit, he was probably, like, the manager at the fucking Long John Silvers. <laughs> Yeah. And he's like, uh, we gotta make more fucking hush puppies, god damn it. Now everybody be quiet, I'm sculpting John Smith or whatever the fuck. <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is but also Mark de Graffenreed, that's not a common <clears throat> name. So I can't imagine there's two Mark de Graffenreeds. Yeah. You know? So I don't fucking know which Mark de Graffenreed was in this film. So, okay. So I'd apart give him a call. From... Just for the fuck Maybe. of it, I'd give him a call. Maybe. So Maybe apart... his dad. Maybe. So apart from the famous people, Adam Goldberg from Dazed and Confused, Steve Burns from Blues Clues, and Fred Armisen from SNL, and also possible famous Mormon Mark DeGraffenreed, everyone else in this movie is in the fucking flaming lips. Yeah. So when you're saying that, like, oh, the acting is shit... Yeah, that's because, it, like, uh, oh, uh, that space, that spaceman is the bassist. That spaceman plays drums. 
That guy that can't act plays the keyboards and gets the acid. Fucking, I don't know. That guy's on heroin. Flaming Lips. Not the best actors in the world. Yeah, but okay, but even look at this picture that I threw up for the segment. Okay? Yeah. That's a good looking picture. So why did the is. fucking rest of the movie look like this? No Why idea. did they only use stupid ass interspersed color from time to time? That's an interesting looking Martian outfit. Natasha kept saying, why the close-ups of mouths and faces? Yeah. Yeah, it was creepy, but the best I could muster is, this is essentially a student film. Yeah. This is a, this is a black and white, super cheap, shot on 8mm fucking first time film from a bunch of weirdos that know each other. And Steve from Blue's Clues. <laughs> okay, so there have been three hosts of Blue's Clues. First, there was Steve. He was the original host, and they, they interviewed a bunch of different hosts, and, and they just didn't find the right person. And then they interviewed this young, like, 22-year-old named Steve Burns. He had super long hippie hair, and he just acted in a way where it's like he's friends with you, but also he was kind of cool and kind of aloof, almost like he didn't give a fuck. And they liked him, and so he cut his hair, and he was the host of Blue's Clues for like four years. And then he quit, and the reason why he quit was, like some, like a bunch of people, like a bunch of white dudes, when they get to their 20s and 30s, they start fucking balding rapidly, and Steve Burns didn't want to go bald slowly in front of a camera. Yeah. So he quit, and they got another host named Joe... And Joe was host for a long time, like twice as long, three times as long as Steve from Blue's Clues. But everyone still loved Joe. Now there's a third host, and he's like this uh, Asian guy. What's his name? You don't remember? I don't remember. But now, if he has trouble, he calls both Steve and Joe. So it's kind of like a Blue's clues averse. Blue's clue universe. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. We're going to have to go back a couple of pages Motherfucker quit his job because he was losing his hair? Yeah, yeah. And so uh, he came back a couple of times when was Joe he a was Mormon host. sculptor? I don't know. who. I don't know who the fucking Mormon sculptor is. I tried to find a picture. You might want to ask Steve about that. I tried to find a picture of Mark DeGaffin Reed, the famous Mormon sculptor, and there was a picture... And it's like, I couldn't tell if that was the same guy from this grainy black and white Flaming Lips movie because they're both doughy white guys. But it's like, I can't tell if they're the same doughy white guy. So I don't know if... Steve might have the golden plates. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so so I love the fact that Steve from Blue's Clues is in this because... Um, I never saw Blue's Clues until I started dating Natasha and, uh, and uh, I started being a parent to Emerald. And then I started watching Blue's Clues. Uh, when I started working at the bookstore, Blue's Clues was still on TV and Joe was the host. And one thing that I would regularly hear, which would always make me feel better and cheer me up, is when I would hear people say, yeah, Joe is okay, but Steve is so much better than Joe. Oh, man. I yeah. love Steve and not Joe, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just so much better than my older brother, right? Oh, wait, we're talking about Blue's Clues. <laughs> Hold on. We're not talking about my older brother, Joe, who just started a YouTube channel because I can't have my own thing. Fucking okay, but I really like the fact that Steve is in this because everyone loves Steve and fuck Joe. Yeah, fuck Joe. Sure, Joe has been around longer, but Steve was just better. Yeah, Steve was just better, cooler, funnier. Fuck Joe. Steve is the best. So I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Steve from Blues Clues, okay. and also fucking Fred Armisen is in this. Yeah. 
That was that was a that was a huge surprise. And he was like the first one who popped up, isn't he? I mean, yeah. I, I I might not yeah. necessarily recognize Steve. I didn't watch it. I was yeah. Involved. I kept going like, is that Steve? No, that's not Steve. Is that Steve? No, that's not Steve. Is that Steve? No, that's not Steve. But once I heard his voice, I'm like, shit, that's Steve. I know that's Steve. That's one hundred percent Steve because that's how much Blue's Clues I had to watch with my two oldest. So, with like, Emerald Fred Armiston was the first famous face to pop up in this. And, and I looked at yep. him and I was like, what the fuck are you doing in this? That's exactly what you said. I can tell you what he's doing in this. I put a lot of thought into this. Because at first, probably like you, I was thinking, why was Fred Armisen in this? Oh, well, I figured it out. Anytime a musician says his name three times... Fred Armisen appears like Candyman. Oh, I think. That and there's a lot of famous people who can be summoned. Every time a movie studio says, "Our next film is a musical," bam, James Corden is right behind you. Yeah. I heard you were going to make a little movie. Pip, pip, boom. Suddenly, James Corden appears. You know what? We have enough money together. I think we should make a Christian film. And I think that this Christian film should be about... Holy shit, why is Kevin Sorbo suddenly in my room? <laughs> Holy crap, how did you get here, Kevin? So, uh, there's probably more, but that's all I could think of. If you can think of any other celebrities that just magically appear. That can just be summoned? That can be summoned? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Richard Simmons could always be summoned, but only by David Letterman. David Letterman had the power to summon a Richard Simmons whenever he wanted. And a Regis Philbin? Yeah. David Letterman could always summon a Regis... And uh, Richard Simmons. Yeah. Um, Those are individual honey, powers. That's not for everybody. Yeah, that's not for everybody. That's not for everybody. Honey, what's it, your cat's name? Miso? Is it a boy or a girl? Boy? Okay. I was going to say, it might be a lesbian because literally it's licking the box that it's laying down on. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay. That gets into... A weird area. Yeah, so the rest of the cast is primarily members of the Flaming Lips. And I, I like this film. I assumed it was going to be absolute shit and it was going to be the worst. And it kind of is, but it feels like just like a low-budget <coughs> labor of love, like in an Ed Woodian way, where it's like, yeah, the movie kind of sucks, but also maybe the reason why the movie <coughs> is made should hold as much weight as the quality of the movie, which is why I can appreciate like a Birdemic or uh, uh, The Room or a Born into Mafia. Yeah, you're not, no, you're not, you're not a lot of times, on this one here. Not on this one. Because nobody, because like they didn't make this movie, the Flaming Lips didn't make Christmas on Mars to be a fucking blockbuster, you know? Yeah. And so like, it's weird as shit, but, like, I appreciate Christmas on Mars more than, like, a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Because, like, that was made by an entire fucking, well, uh, like, a, yeah. like, a whole group of executives just to sell toys and make money overseas. But, like, this movie was just made for, like, uh, uh, the Flaming Lips specifically said, we're not going to show this in movie theaters. We're going to show it at concert venues, and we're going to have uh, uh, colored lights, and then when it snows at the end, we'll have giant snow machines so that everyone will be snowed in. Uh, there'll be snow everywhere when, when it snows in the film, and it's like, okay, that's weird as shit, and I appreciate that because you're not making this film to make money. Yeah. This, this, you didn't make this to be bankable, and I doubt anyone made money off of this. And like, okay, so I appreciate that, you know? 
it sucks. Don't get me wrong. This is a sucky movie, but I appreciate it in, in, in that I don't know they worked hard. It, it and it uh, took them like know, six that's years. Where I, disagree. I don't think they worked nearly <laughs> hard enough. Yeah. Again, we're not talking about Jimmy got a camera for Christmas. You know, this the flaming lips. They got the money. They, they do got have more the money, money than shows this, in this. They do have the money. They could have made a much more expensive film. And this I'll give picture you that. proves color existed. Yeah. Yeah. And the space vaginas make no sense. A lot of space vaginas. Yeah. So, so I, I'm going to have to give this one a thumbs down. Sorry. It's okay. I give, I give it a lazy Orange Cassidy thumbs up. Which is this. It's a thumb laying down. <laughs> so, this is how Orange Cassidy, my favorite wrestler from AEW, gives a thumbs up because he's so lazy. He can't get the thumb up, so he just goes like this. The, that's my uh, Orange Cassidy thumbs up for this film. It wasn't deep hurting, but I don't know if I'd watch it again. So, there's... It wasn't, it wasn't deep hurting. No. Yeah. Because you said last week that, that you heard it was going to be deep hurting. It yeah. wasn't deep hurting, but like it's also not the best Christmas movie in the world. Um, okay, so that's this week's film. Now it's time for next week. Next week's big reveal. Are you ready for this, Bunny? I hope so. Okay. Next week, we're doing a double feature. Okay. And I feel like before I say the names of these films, that there's a good chance that you'll know what movies I'm talking about. Because I was wondering, should we do the first film or should we do the second film? Well, we got to do the first film. Let's do the first film and maybe next week we can do a second film. No, but there's other Christmas movies that I want to do. Maybe we can do the first film this year and the second movie this year. And then I thought, no, I am not waiting until next year for Garbage Day. <laughs> God damn it. So <laughs> next week, double feature, Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2. Okay. Boom. I've got both of them. I'll send you the links. That's what we're doing next week. I can't, we can't just watch part one without seeing Garbage Day. <laughs> it, it is one of the best line reads just of all time. And so there you go. Oh, nice. That's what we're doing next week. A Christmas horror movie double feature. And I think after that, we're going to do the bizarre Christmas movie, uh, Last Christmas. It's a Christmas movie. I saw it in 2009. It's a jukebox musical. It's a Christmas film feature, and the entire soundtrack is music from the band Wham. Oh, my God, yeah. And it's got a weird twist at the end, which is just so fucking bizarre. It's a twist, and the twist is in the song... Okay, but that's two weeks away. Next week, double feature, a dumb, stupid, fun, fucking double feature, Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. I believe, if I am not mistaken, that Silent Night, Deadly Night was the first horror movie I saw. Really? Okay. I think I was like 10, and it fucked me up. I'm pretty sure it was that, because there's a few other, like, cheap 80s Santa kills movies out there. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it was Silent Night, Deadly Night that, like... Got all the press. Yeah, that I remember. I think that every holiday should have a horror movie. And we, we're not doing it this year, but I did find a, a gory horror movie just called... Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Like, okay, I appreciate that. I appreciate yes. that. Every holiday should get one. You know? Like, like, Mother Earth is real, and she's out for revenge. Earth Day. Yeah. The Earth 
strikes back. You know, every holiday needs a horror movie. When is Eli Roth going to finally get out of his ass and do Thanksgiving? Yeah. From Grindhouse. Come on! We don't need another hostel. That's what <laughs> Tina Turner sang in the 80s. So that's next week. Our Christmas horror movie double feature, and I'm super excited about that. But now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, the space vaginas, the blues clues, the raccoon cities, the Garfield movies, I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. I think this has been a damn good episode. A damn good, a double damn. Ooh, a rare double damn. <laughs> we got a double damn here, everybody. That's unprecedented. Without <laughs> precedent. Crazy. I feel the same way, but I didn't want to say anything. because You're the person who makes that distinction and not me, and I didn't want to step on any toes. But yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve. And on behalf of Natasha and Eleanor and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Give it a moment. Give it a moment. Give it a moment. Give it a moment. Like you're walking Give up. it a moment. And you do your for pizza. And you bazooka oh, Joe flavored. And you bazooka Joe bubblegum flavored soda. And you gummy bear. That was sweet. That soda was actually surprisingly good. And the other mothers. And you other mothers. Thank you. Do, 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 I, I'm do, do. sorry. I'm, I find myself rather proud that Maxwell made a bazooka Joe reference. Well, uh, it, it, to be fair, they were just looking at what was in front of them. I have some. Uh, I bought some more cans of Bazooka Joe Bubblegum flavored soda, which is surprisingly really effing good. <laughs> this is really good, and we're blown away. We're just drinking it now because we like it, and that's really weird. But uh, oh, hi, Gaspacho. Eleanor, do this is Gaspacho. Gaspacho is purring. Hold on, let's. I wonder if they can pick that up. I think you can hear that. Oh, we'll have to do a playback and see if people can hear that, because that would be neat. Anyway. Do 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 do